Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. Today we're going to do another rambling stitching session and I'm going to continue working on my autumn runner, adding some beads to some already completed seams. We're going to take a look at some of the projects I have coming up. I'm not going to look too far down the road because I know it's really easy to get my sights set on great big plans and then they don't come to fruition. I look forward to sharing those with you today. So with that, let's get going. I'm going to show you my lineup of projects for the rambling videos first and then we're going to take a look at a couple of my bigger longer term projects that I want to work on. Once I finish the autumn runner, this is my next project. These are some blocks that were done in a round robin. This has been years ago. Uh, 2011 I believe. Sorry for the creaking of my table. I love my new sewing table but I find it makes noises that I don't always anticipate. I would like to finish this in the rambling sessions. That's going to be coming up once we finish this autumn runner. Then I have two others that I hope to be working on. I created this block when I first started crazy quilting. Oh my gosh, it's been a long time ago. This is one that I'd really like to get finished and I'm actually thinking this might make a great pin cushion. I've got some seams to finish. I also in my bag of threads and stuff I've got a number of elements, these buttons and beads and things that I could add to it. So if I do it as a pin cushion those things will get relegated around the outside. That one will probably come after the bell pull. Then I have this block. This is my Midsummer Night Dream block. My idea was I wanted it to just be full out here with a window through the greenery and flowers into this little fairy. And I want this design to carry out into the block. This also was another early pieced block. It's got a really stiff silky print in the middle of it. One of my favorite seams I've ever stitched is this ferny seam. It's a feather stitch seam with lazy daisies on it basically. My hope maybe by December we'll be working on this one. We'll see. Once upon a time, I went to an antique store with my sister. I found this embroidered panel, and I don't know what it was about it, but I just fell in love with it, and I think I might have paid $5 for it. It wasn't very much. I immediately could envision this as the center panel with a crazy quilt border around it, and the plan is to make a six inch border that goes all the way around, that's pieced from these five colors, and then the stitching on it is going to be in black, and I'm gonna use one stitch only, and then I'll have a black binding around the outside. So this is when I'll probably make a single video of, you know, in an ideal world, I'd love to get this done for Christmas, but I don't think that's going to happen. Watch for this one at some point once I get a couple of these other projects done and out of the way. The last project is this cathedral window project. It's got a fun story to go with it, which I'll tell you about when I make the final video. This is a project I'm looking forward to getting finished and sharing the story of with you. So I'm not quite a third finished with it. There's quite a bit more to come, but that'll be a standalone video eventually, hopefully before the end of the year. We'll see. Many of you have asked about the Denim Crazy Quilt Project. It is on hold. I have not stitched on this since 2020. I still have all the materials to piece the remaining number, so these are big blocks. If I remember right, they're 14 inches. Yeah, they're 14 inch blocks. I may do a smaller quilt. Originally I was going to do a 6 blocks by 6 blocks. It will not be that big, I'll guarantee you that. I have no plans to work on this in the near future. I think while I was working on this or other things that were going on in my life that I lost my mojo for this project. And one of these days I'll find it. I'm really looking forward to working on these areas with this backing fabric and turning that into something interesting. But I need to rethink where I'm going with it. It's not going to happen this year. Right now it's in a tub and it's archived for all practical purposes. So no, nothing's happening with the denim project. You guys will be the first to know if I get working on it again. I want to work on this seam and add some beads to it, but I don't remember what that seam originally looked like, so I'm going to refer back to this book and let's see if we can find that two-colored herringbone. 
it looks like she just had it plain. So I'm going to do whatever I want here. I'm just going to add something to it that I feel helps balance it out. Choosing beads. Here we go. This is always a challenge with a project like this because we have several different things on it and I'm kind of thinking that we need something that's going to show up here against that pale color. So I have these green ones and I like those. Those are really tiny ones though. So let's look at Oh my gosh, if I can get them open. There are a lot of reasons, like I said, why I don't like these containers. Let's try, those bigger ones are better. I like that better right there already. Okay, so now we have to figure out what it is we're going to actually do with them. And do I want to do something different over here? Now one of the things I have not used on this project so far that I know of are bugle beads. And I do have these that go pretty well with it. I think we could do... No, oh, that don't show up on that side at all. But what about those? That shows up really nice. I always like that where you've got more than one bead coming off. Something like that and end those with that green. And then maybe do one coming down and then maybe we could use bronze one or I've always liked these let's see do they show up on there actually that might be really nice okay so we're gonna go and we're gonna use those on the orange side and then we're gonna use these gold bugles on the beige side with these so I am making a mess here guys I think these yellow and orangey ones are vintage. They're kind of a two colors in there. There's some they're a little more yellow, some they're a little more orange. And we're just going to let them go random. And then on these green ones, we're going to do some. So that's more than enough of those. We won't need those. So I'm just keeping these separate over here so I know which ones I've actually used. We have my beige beading thread. It's a Nymo. And this one is a size B. And I already have some beading thread on my needle from last time. And I always work with a doubled length. Got my scissors, my little pin cushion, and let's get going. Let's start on this orange side. I've got a knot in that thread already. I always knot it the minute I take it off. And here's where I need to decide. Do I want to do just one or do I want to do two? Will two be a better balance down there? Or is it going to look strange with three? Or should I just do one? I like two better. So bugle beads, I like to make sure I've got a bead at the end. One end won't have it, but the other one will. And I'm gonna come right back up in the same spot I started from, but that seed bead on the end will help prevent the glass bugle bead from breaking the thread. And that's the other reason for the double thread. Hopefully if one thread breaks, the other will still be there. And I'm just going to go straight across and do these. My thread's not terribly long, so it's hard to reach over and get the bead. But these should go pretty quickly. So I lay it down flat, and then I take my needle vertical at the end of it. And like I said, I'm going to come right back where I came up through the fabric. And sometimes with the doubled thread, if one thread doesn't pull through quite as tight, just readjust and catch it as you go. I think that bit of green is going to actually be a real help in this orangey block. Come over here. Sorry, I know when I'm working like this, it's hard to see the detail. I'm really happy with how that's looking. That really just pops right off of there. I do have some little bead trays. Having one of those right now would actually be pretty helpful. I got out two of these little bead trays. I love these white plastic ones because I can see the color of the bead really well. They're really helpful and just because I'm trying to work so close my thread is short, I'm going to scoop up both of these beads that I'm using at the moment into the bead tray so that it's a little easier for me to reach. I can just grab it and pull it over and I may do that with this other section, although I'll have new thread by then. I like the bead mat, but I also like the trays. So I'm going to move the bead mat out of the way for the moment. It's just in my way right now. The biggest problem with these, if you have cats, is that they step on them and flip them. When I'm going to grab a bead, I can bring the tray up 
And if with those edges, I can just pick it right up, push the beads down, straight down. I'm trying to come right up in the vertical center of that little V here. And so this is going to be the last bead because that thread is a little short here. Then we'll get a new thread. And then I pull the beads down. I just use my fingernail to pull it down. And I take the needle down vertically and that helps hold them nice and tight. If I was putting more beads there, I might go and put a tacking stitch between the two. But right now I need to tie a knot because otherwise it's going to be too short to do that. So I'm just picking up the backing fabric. And I mentioned it's in my last Ramblings video, but I always do two knots with when I'm using nylon beading thread because my experience has been that it sometimes comes undone. And two just gives me a little added security. I also don't cut my ends too short, so I always leave, I don't know, close to a quarter of an inch there when I'm doing that. Isn't that looking great? Again, trying to come up roughly where I came up originally. Oh, I don't need two of them, I only need one. And then I'm just carrying it on the back. And then I pull it out so that it doesn't buckle. I definitely feel like having the bead tray right now is helping me. So bead mats are good in their place, but try the little trays if you're having trouble with it. I know a lot of people use a sticky mat and really like those. Truthfully, I have not used them, so I can't tell you one way or the other. But with my aversion to glues on my projects, anything that's likely to leave a residue, I'm not real happy about. I try to avoid that at all costs. One of the things that I highly recommend, if you ever get a chance, is to go to a crazy quilt retreat. Take any advantage of opportunities you have to stitch with other people because one of the things I've learned is that there's so many ways of doing things. And while I'm showing you what I use, it's not the only way. We often say in crazy quilting that there's no rules, and I really believe that for the most part. I mean, I think there are things that we can do that make certain things easier, but generally what works best is what works best for you. You want to make it your own and you want to work in a way that's comfortable for you. So don't just go, oh, well, she said this and that's the only way to do it. I don't believe that. This is just the way that I work. It's one of many methods. Everybody's going to bring their own approach to it. And you may discover something that nobody else has done before by making it work for you. And then you can share that technique with somebody else. I learned from so many people and I'm so grateful for everything I've learned from people. And I think this is the last one I'm going to do because this one is really close to the edge. If I decide later I need one there, I can come back and add one. But when I go to finish this project, I don't want to bead right there on the edge that's going to make it more difficult to sew if I'm adding a border or something with the machine, which I more than likely will be doing or even just sewing a backing on. Okay, now I finished that line of stitching. I'm going to tie a knot and then I'm going to start again on the other side. That is not the best knot. Good thing it's the second knot. We're just going to clip it and call it good. So I'm not going to do those orange ones here. So we're actually done with those. I'm going to set them out of the way. So we're going to come over here. Now on this one, I'm going to work a slightly different pattern since I'm going to do three bugle beads on this side. I'm going to start with the center one and then we'll come back and put the other ones around it. These we're going to do a green bugle bead at the end. So this one's going to come straight up. And again, we're going to come right back down where I started maybe ever so slightly below that. So even though there's a little variegation in color in these, I'm not going to try and be real consistent from one to one. I want it to have kind of a random appearance. My threads are not quite running. Even. So one of the things I'm noticing as I've done this 
is that I needed to bring up that center one just a tiny bit. So I'm a little bit higher on this one, not a lot. Straight up and down. And then we're going to come a little bit below that to run those other two. I think it will look a little nicer. Yeah, I think that looks nicer. So definitely worth setting that middle one up just a smidgen higher. So I had a wonderfully social week last week. Had a lovely get together with some co-workers from the garden center, which was really delightful. I haven't attended a party like that in I couldn't tell you how long. I planned on staying for a short amount of time because one of the things that people don't always know about me is I'm actually pretty shy and quiet and I sometimes have a hard time with small talk. When teaching, I'm teaching something I know and I know what I'm talking about. And so I love teaching. Yeah, so there's gonna be a little variation. I think I got that one a little too high. We'll make it work. My daughter-in-law and her co-worker have taken on ownership of a birth center and getting that started. And it's a huge amount of effort and they're just doing an amazing job. So I went to a fundraiser and I donated one of my oil paintings. So I'll put a picture of that up here for you to see which painting I donated and pleased that I was able to help them out in that way. So that was a lot of fun. I got to see her and it's my middle son. I also got to have dinner with my daughter that night, which was very enjoyable. We don't get to see each other very much anymore. Oops, I'm putting the wrong beat on. Talking too much. And then a couple days later, my youngest son called and said, let's go to dinner. And they took me to dinner at a restaurant near where we used to live. I'm in a different town when the kids were growing up, so that was a lot of fun. We got to drive past where our old house was and our house that had burned down and where we had sold the lot and see that yard. It was fun to recognize that some of the trees we had planted were still there and so much bigger now. And gosh, that's been 25 or more years now. So we really had a good time with that. And then I got to spend a couple of days with some grandkids while mom and dad went to have a night out to see some of their friends. So I actually spent a couple of nights at Kitty and I's had a trip to go visiting. So wonderful to spend time with them. Love seeing them. This thread is short, so let's finish that up. So really social week. That was really wonderful to have all that time with family and friends and just the good crew of co-workers from the garden center this year. It was really wonderful. Oh my gosh, I am apparently can't see today. I've just made a heck of a mess with this knot. There we go. Knot one. Boy, I almost got that thread too short. And then we've had a couple of days of rain after a week of 90 plus degree weather. We've had really along the front range here in Colorado, we've had wonderful weather this year. And I know that's not been the case for so many people in other parts of the country. But I've been so grateful for what weather that's much more like what I remember when I was young and growing up. I have this problem with glasses that I can't see with them and I can't see without them. 
I periodically get floaters in my eye and I had a big episode of them earlier this week. It's allergy season for me and I'm pretty sure I blew my nose too hard. Not the first time. I'm sure it won't be the last. I haven't had one like this in a while so my left eye is really cloudy at the moment as a result and I've been in communication with the eye doctor and everything's fine. It's just that my norm unfortunately. There we go. I think I do this better by feel than I do by trying to look at it. Okay. That end's not too long, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that length. All right, where are we at? Oh, look at that. I only have one left to go. Isn't that the way it goes? Well, we'll be ready for the next one. You can see how quickly it eats up thread. Wrapped around. There we go. That is better. So needless to say, with the floaters, I didn't do much stitching this past week because Usually on the initial day it happens, I'm seeing all sorts of black specks. I think there's flies or gnats running around me. I'm batting them away. I just can't see detail. So now I just have a little cloud. And it'll eventually absorb and be gone. So, All right. Put a knot in that, and that seam is done. Well, we spent enough time talking about my projects, upcoming projects and stuff in this one that I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one here. I think we're going to, and I may just keep stitching and film it for the next one. So. There we go. So that seam is finished. I've really had a good time stitching this seam and sharing some of my projects with you. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate your presence here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section and certainly hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. All those are things that really help the channel succeed and I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.